Well, let, let's take it a bit uh, more political now and, and, and look at the political equation right now. We've, we've spoken about the strategic and defence and, and all of that, you know, very noble and worthwhile discussion. But on the politics of it, Stephen... Queensland looked like it had improved a bit in terms of the equation for Labor, although WA lost a bit of paint in recent times, according to the news poll analysis this week. What was your read on all of that? Look, I think that's consistent. I mean, part of the problem when you take just a straight national aggregated together, it doesn't give you a picture of what's happening in the different states. Uh, and you see a number that shows Labor has dropped. But it doesn't necessarily mean that Labor is losing any seats in Queensland or holding all its seats in Western Australia. And what that disaggregation showed you was that Labor, while not winning five seats in Queensland, uh, are not in as a dire position where it needs to win seats. Clearly, we are at a high watermark in Western Australia. I mean, I would, you know, in my heart of hearts, I want to hold every single one of those. It will be hard. Uh, the Western Australian state governments uh, ran a magnificent uh, COVID policy that was thoroughly supported by, you know, 80% of Western Australians, whether the East Coast liked it or not. And Labor uh, drove that and it cost the Liberal government at the time four seats by their stupidity backing a High Court challenge of Clive Palmer. So that disaggregation gives you a much better picture of the challenges Labor faces if it wants to hold government in its own light and not be forced into a minority government. And there were some good signs uh, and some average signs in that poll. And I would think Labor will be very conscious of the messages that were behind those numbers. Yeah, indeed. And, and for Peter Dutton as well, I, I think it's fair to say some good signs, some concerning signs there too for, for him and the coalition. And one thing that you always say to Michael, and, and one of the many good points that you make in politics is that you've got to have a vision You've got to. Ha you've got to. You can't just be against everything. You've got to also have a vision. Are they fleshing that out enough? Do you think the coalition right now? No, not at the minute, and that goes for the state Liberal parties as well. Um, KG, as I keep saying, you know, people have got to believe their best days are ahead of them, and that's the way you win votes. And the only way you convince people their best days are ahead of them is if you convince them that things are going to change under you. If you're just offering the status quo, well, no one thinks their life's going to get better. You're not offering any proof their life's going to get better, so they won't vote for you. So the role of any opposition and government, but particularly in opposition, is to, to show people why things will improve under you, why you should vote for us. Your best days will be ahead of you under a Liberal government in Dutton's case. So he has to show why in three or four really important areas life will improve under you. And the problem a lot of Liberal oppositions... Um, with a lot of Liberal oppositions over the years, is they have this policy of waiting for two years before an election and then spitting out a whole lot of policies on the Gestet or a few months before the election and expect the public to consume and be convinced by those policies. The one thing Dutton has done very well that many others haven't done, he's defining himself. He defined himself by having the courage to be yeah. against the voice. We know what happened there. He's defining himself by saying, I'm for nuclear, another big issue. So Dutton has started to define himself, but the question is, are they election winning, are they vote winning issues for the election at the end of this year, early next year? I'd say they're probably not to the extent we need because cost of living is the number one and the only issue facing Australians today. So in the next few months, yeah. find some cost of living issues, get onto those because that's what will draw you into the chance of getting a majority of the seats in the reps and then a chance of being uh, in most likely minority government. That's yeah. That's the number one, uh, number one, two, and three. Michael, Stephen, great to chat as always. See you next week. Thanks, mate. Next week.